on Windy City Live. All right, welcome back, everybody. Well, Mark, you were uh, hanging out yesterday at Millennium Park, and you came up with some crazy idea well, to kind we of trick folks. Yeah, we were doing that live, you know, the live remote, and we were scrambling, Mary and I and, and Brett, because there was nobody there, and we were trying to get people to come and play that game with us, and we barely got, we got four people right before we went live. I was worried that we weren't going to get anybody, so uh, a friend of mine gave me a really good idea. What if you were doing a live remote and the guest didn't show up? And I thought, people in Chicago are so nice and so helpful. If you're really in trouble, they will help you out. So we decided to check out that hypothesis. And all I did is I walked up to people and I said, I need your help. Right. And one of you guys pretend yeah, right. to be him. All right. His name's Paco Martina. He's a okay. fashion designer. He had a show at McCormick Place okay. last night. All right. Okay. So just 30 seconds. All right. Just pretend to be him. Your name's Paco. Okay. Brian and Val, we're here at Millennium Park at the Bean, and we are talking to world-famous fashion designer Paco Di Martini. Paco, thanks for joining us. No problem. Uh, you had a great fashion show last night at McCormick Place. What was that like? It was wonderful. It was awesome. A lot of people showed up, and a lot of good, great turnout. Now, where do you get your inspiration from, and, and, and why did you decide to be a fashion designer? Well, I like clothes and traveling the world, get a lot of ideas and backgrounds and things like that, and go with that. The, the, the big splash that you made uh, last night at the show, and I don't think anyone, I mean, I'm not a fashion expert, obviously, but uh, I don't think anyone has done this before. Where did you get the inspiration to combine stiletto heels and hefty garbage bag uh, skirts? Well, it was just something that came up looking at people. You see homeless people and things like that, and you get ideas how to use what's in the environment together to put it together. And th these inspirations, do they come to you? Like, do you sit at a desk and draw? Do they come to you in the shower? How do, Just take me through your inspirational I process. Just, some some through the desk, some from walking around observing people. A lot of observation what people like and what they don't like and what the people are looking for do you uh, do you do you, do you see any cool fashion statements here at the bean yeah there's a lot of cool fashion statements people wearing different things halter tops shorts different shirts we gave different ideas for shirts on that. And because you're such a great urban artist, you kind of combine these things in your work? Yes. Okay. So the show last night, huge success. I, I can't let you go without asking about what happened last year uh, when the animal uh, animal rights people boycotted your line. You, you have, you made all the earrings, the necklaces, and the accessories made from puppy parts. Right. Now, you said you were trying to draw attention to animal euthanasia. Do you think it worked? I think it worked because more people are aware about animals and ha letting them live longer and stuff and not putting them to sleep and let them get a longer life unless they really need to be put to sleep. I'm not an advocate for that. Right. But, I mean, everybody has a time life and everything, but it makes them more aware to take care of their pets and things like that. You were actually booed off the stage last March in New York when the model came down the runway wearing severed puppy paws for earrings. What did that feel like? It felt terrible because they missed the whole point of what I was trying to inspire them to see, that animals are like humans. You need to take care of them and look out for them and stuff like that. They missed the whole point. Right. And, and and the, uh, it looked like that guy, when the, when the next model came out with the kitty mittens, mm -hmm. it looked like that guy, when he hit you, he really hit you hard. Did that hurt? Yeah, it hurt a little bit, but it just comes with the industry. You get some people that are they're not going to like things, but you just roll with it and keep going. All right, Paco, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, your time. That's Paco Martini, world-famous fashion designer. His big show was at McCormick Place last night. The next one is at Water Tower Place. When is that? Uh, it's coming up soon. I don't have the date with me. Okay, can people go to your website? Yes, they can go to the website and look for it. Okay, what's the the, the web address? Paco, Paco www.com. Beautiful. Paco D. Martini, thank you so much thank for joining you. us on Windy City Live. No problem. Back to you in the studio, guys. See that? Only in Chicago. <laughs> only in Chicago would someone help me out. We had no. <laughs> What a big-hearted guy. So My you're goodness. telling me you did not rehearse that. You didn't. You just threw all that we, stuff We had him. the truck out there. We had some time to kill, and we figured it would, we would try it and be funny. We just, I was frantic. And he I literally grabbed it. him and said, you're going to be this guy. We, and we did more. We have four more. If you want to go to our website, you can take a look at it there. That, that guy's name is Jimmy Diaz, his real name. And we, uh, <laughs> we gave him a, a nice gift certificate to Harry Carey's. We gave people, other people uh, to a Branch 27 yeah. and let us entertain you. So everyone we talked to, we gave them dinners. But you know what? It, people are nice. People uh, will help you out in this. Very thing. nice, Mark. And if you want to see more of Mark's interviews, fake interviews, go to <laughs> WendyCityLive.com. We're going to be right